Let's go over the four essential concepts you need to know before you take your next SAT. If I were to go back in high school and take the SAT again, these are the four things that I would definitely want to know because not only are they very popular on the exam, but they are super easy to understand and get extra points on. And as we all know, we could use extra points on the SAT. So guys, I'm going to quickly go over the concept, show you what these questions look like on the SAT and how it's applied on these questions. And everything we're going to talk about in this video and everything I'm going to show you here is going to be nicely organized into a PDF, which you can go to the pinned comment, download, print it out yourself and try it with me because that's how you get better on the SAT. So take a second, don't be that student, go print it out and try it with me. And if you're ready, let's get started. So percents are very popular on the SAT and the main critical essential skill you need is understanding the difference between finding 30% of something and increasing something by something. Small difference of of and by, but here's what you need to understand for the SAT. So on the SAT, you're gonna see if 6% of the 50 gummy bears were eaten, how many were eaten, right? So the person ate 6% of the gummy bears, right? So how many did he eat? Well, if you wanna find percent of anything, you just multiply by the decimal version of the percent, which is going to be 50 times 0 0.06, which is going to be three. Our answer is choice A. Now that was pretty simple, but what if the question asks you something like, how many gummy bears are there if the original population of 50 has increased by 6%? Now, we're not just talking about 6%, but we're talking about increasing it by 6%. So what you need to do here instead is 50 times 1.06, because 1.06 is 106%, which is a combination of 100% original plus the 6% increase. And doing so will give you 53, which is going to be choice D. We're obviously using super easy questions here to demonstrate the concept, but when the questions get hard for level three, four, five questions, they are still going to use the same idea. So this is definitely something you wanna understand how to do. Make sense? Let's go to the next concept. Second one is going to be discriminant. Discriminant is literally one of my favorite concepts on the SAT because these show up as one of the last few questions on the SAT, which are meant to be very, very hard, but it's only hard if you don't know how to use discriminant. If you understand the two usages that were tested on the SAT, these questions become super easy and super easy points. So on the SAT, discriminant, which can be calculated by using the formula B squared minus 4AC serves two purposes. First is for you to find the number of X intercepts, number of roots in a quadratic function or a parabola. So for example, whenever you have a parabola, you can have parabola high up in the air has zero X intercepts, or it could have one X intercept like so, or it could have two X intercepts like so. When you're given a graph, it's really easy to find, but when you are just given an equation like that, it's pretty tough to find out how many x-intercepts there are. And that's exactly where discriminants come in handy. You're simply gonna plug in a, b, and c from the quadratic function into the formula, and that will tell you how many x-intercepts there are. So for example, we have discriminant is equal to b squared minus four ac. B is going to be minus five squared minus four one C, and that's gonna be 25 minus eight, which is going to be just positive 17. And when your discriminant is positive, when it is greater than zero, there are two roots or two X intercepts. Your parabola probably looks something along the lines of this one right here, where it has two X intercepts or two roots. So whenever the question is giving you a parabola and it's asking you to find the number of roots, Simply go to discriminant, pop it into the equation, and you'll be good to go. Now, the second usage of discriminant is between a line and a parabola. It's used to find out the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. Because if you think about it, a line and a parabola could have either one solution, no solution, or two solutions, or two intersections. And when you're given a graph like that, it's really easy to find, but if you're simply provided the equations right here, then it's kind of hard to tell. And some of you guys might be thinking, John, I can just pop it into the graphing calculator and find out how many intersections there are. With the SAT going digital, where calculators allow for both sections or both modules, the College Board is coming up with questions where simply plugging in into the graphing calculator is not gonna get you the answer. And more importantly, there are questions where it's just simply not possible for you to plug in the equation into the graphing calculator because they're gonna have variables inside the quadratic function or in the linear function. So long story short, you're gonna be in better hands if you actually understand how to use discriminants for a line and a parabola. If it simply came down to plugging in the calculator, then it wouldn't be fair for people who do not have graphing calculators. I know how SAT seems, but they're all about keeping everything consistent because it's a standardized exam, it's the same for everybody. Okay, so I don't know how we got that far away from the topic, but let's talk about how discriminant works for a line and a parabola. So we have a two X to the first power, which is a line, and then second power, which is a parabola, right? How many intersections 
these two functions above have, the first thing you have to do is you have to set the equations equal to each other. 2x minus 5 is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 2. And now you're going to combine the equations by moving everything to the other side. x squared minus 7x plus 7 is equal to 0. And then you're going to pop it into discriminant, which is going to be minus 7 squared minus 4, 1, c, 7, which is going to be 49 minus 28, which is going to be 21. And because our discriminant is greater than zero, it tells us that there are two intersections between the line and the parabola, which means our answer is going to be choice C. So this is going to be the quick table you really want to understand and memorize. Does that make sense? If it really doesn't make sense, you can click this link right here, or you can click this link right here for every one of these topics. So let's go to the next topic, which is going to be matching rule. So matching rule is essentially one of my other favorite. It's really similar to discriminant, but it works a little bit differently. So you see how discriminant, we used it for a line and a parabola. Well, matching rule, we use it if we have a line and another line. And the sole purpose of matching rule is to show you the number of intersections between two lines. We're not looking for the exact location of the intersection, but we're just finding the number, how many times two lines intersect. And when it comes to two lines, there are three possibilities. You can either intersect once like so, or intersect zero time because two lines are parallel, or you can intersect infinitely many times because two lines are essentially the same lines. And when you're given a graph like that, it's really easy to tell. But when you are given equations like that, obviously it's going to be very tough. And trust me, matching rule is going to be a lot safer, quicker, and more applicable to harder questions on the SAT. So don't just don't think about using graphing calculator, guys. Calculator is not going to take you to your target score. It's just not going to work out. If getting a 700 plus on the math section came down to having a graphing calculator, then everybody would spend 200 bucks and get a good score. And it really, really wouldn't mean much to have a high SAT math score. So here's how the matching rule works. So when you have two lines, right? How do we find the number of intersections? Well, you're simply going to look at the ratio of the coefficient or the number attached to the Y to the X and the numbers by themselves. And how it works is we're going to find the ratio of the Y's X and the numbers. So when it comes to Y's, what's the ratio? It's one over two. What about the X three over minus six and the number eight over 16, which means if we simplify, we're going to get one half, negative one half and just one half right there. And you see how the ratio of the Y and the numbers are matching. If we go to the matching rule table over here, when the Y and the number are matching, we simply have one solution, which means our answer is going to be choice B. You might be asking, John, what if it was like this? What if it was one half, one half, one half, everything is matching up, then how many solutions do we have? Well, go to the table, matching, matching, matching. We have infinite number of solutions. They are essentially two of the same lines. So the main takeaway here is when it comes to two lines, use the matching rule. When it comes to a line and a parabola, use the discriminant to find out the number of intersections. It's that simple. And last but not least, we're going to go to similar triangles because similar triangles are very popular on the SAT as hard questions. And they're actually very, very easy to identify. But the sad news is most people get it wrong because it shows up as one of the harder questions on the SAT. So here's how it works. Similar triangles. So two triangles are considered similar when they have same set of angles. And when they are similar, their corresponding side lengths are going to be what? They're going to be proportional. So let me write that down because that was a lot of jumbo mumbo and it's going to be hard to understand. So when you have same set of angles, what happens is that your triangle is going to be similar. And when your triangles are similar, what happens is your side length are going to be proportional. And at the end of the day, we're going to use proportion to find the missing length, which is usually how SAT tests you on similar triangles. So let's take a look at this question right here. In the figure above, line segment A, B, and D e are going to be parallel. They're going to be parallel. What's the length of segment B, C, right? So we're looking for this segment right there. Well, because two triangles are kind of like vertical from each other, we know that this angle is going to be the same. And because two lines are parallel, we know that their alternating angles are going to be the same. If you're not sure, check out the angle lecture in the pinned comment. And lastly, the third angles are also alternating, so they are going to be the same as well. And what do we now have? We have two triangles that have same set of angles. They have same set of angles, which means the triangles are going to be what? They are going to be similar, which means the corresponding side lengths are going to be what? They're going to be now proportional. So all we have to do now is set up the proportion with corresponding angles. Keyword is the proportional angle, not any side length, but side length with proportional angles. Here's how it works. If we look at it with the green angle, it goes with that one green angle it goes with that one so if we set up a ratio as short over long we're going to get short which is going to be two and the long side which is going to be 16. and what about the other side right well well if we look at this blue angle right here it's going to be 14 and then unknown side of bc right there so 
we can set it up as long side is going to be 14 and short side is going to be BC. And now that we have an equation with one unknown variable, we simply cross multiply and find our answer. We're gonna get 28 is equal to 16 BC. Our BC is equal to 28 over 16, which is going to be same thing as just seven over four. Our answer is seven over four. Does that make sense, guys? So the key takeaway from here is when you have same set of angles, two triangles are considered similar, which means their corresponding side length are going to be proportional. A common mistake that a lot of students often make is they look at this triangle over here and think, okay, this side looks like it's corresponding with that one. And this side looks like it's corresponding to that one. And they set up the ratio the wrong way and get the wrong answer. And the college board knows exactly what you're going to do. So they put that answer as the first choice and the correct answer all the way at the bottom because they don't want you to see it. So make sure you don't fall for that trap. So let's quickly summarize what we just went over in this video. First, you want to understand the difference between finding percent of something versus increasing it by something. Second, you want to understand the two different usages of discriminant. The first is to find the number of x-intercepts, how many times the parabola crosses the x-axis. The second type is to find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. What if you have two lines? Well, that's when the matching rule comes in. Matching rule shows you the number of intersections between two lines by setting up a simple proportion and using the result with the table. And lastly, you want to understand how similar triangles work. When two triangles have same set of angles, it's considered similar, which makes the corresponding side lengths proportional. If you guys want a more detailed explanation of any of these topics, click the blue link in the worksheet and best of luck to your SAT prep.